What's up everybody, this is your boy Blue here, and today we're going to be doing something completely different than we normally do here at Bluebeard Games. I don't do a lot of mail day videos just because most of the mail I get in is usually just boxes to do for the uh, Crack and Pack series and whatnot, and I don't do a whole lot of trades. So today, we're actually going to do something a little different. I have actually got a, a surprise for one of my... My listeners, well, he's become a friend of the show over the uh, last couple of months, and he's become a friend of mine. Uh, I did a trade with him. He's my probably my number one fan of the channel, and I went ahead and set up a trade with him. So I'm going to show you what I'm sending him, and then I'm going to. He put a little surprise in that package that he sent me, and he wanted me to open them live on the video. So I'm going to do that. But I also included something a little extra special for him. So, Joe, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, say hi, and then we'll go ahead and get started on what I'm going to send you. Hey, everybody. Joe here. So that's Joe, everybody. Now that he's introduced himself, let me go ahead and tell you a little backstory into our trade and tell you why this was being done and why we're collaborating a little bit on this video. So sometime around April or May-ish of this year, he contacted me. He was listening to, the, to one of my shows. And I guess he listens to almost every one of my videos, so I appreciate you, Joe. Um, he wanted to help support the channel. And you know that the, I don't beg for money. I never do. And he wanted to help in some way, shape, or form. So he wanted to buy some of the decks. And as we got talking, I decided, well, you know, rather than that, how about you support me in a different way? We can go and do something I don't normally do, which is do a trade. So we're in the middle of talking about a trade. It's been going on probably since, I don't know, July, June. And it's been this long just because, you know, things have happened, life happens, uh, you know. Him and I talk almost daily about personal things as well as magic. And I decided that if we can do a trade for things, the support that it'll be is that I'll, it'll give me cards that I don't normally have the ability to acquire because I cannot spend money on cards. Let me just get that straight right off the bat. I am not really well enough, like, well off enough to just go buy what I need. I just can't. I'm disabled, as you all know. I have the MS... So I don't work. So everything I get has to be somehow through trade in some way, shape, or form. So we decided to do that, okay? And I'll show you what he wanted, and then we'll kind of go from there. And, you know, the trade might not look even, but at the same time, it's his way of supporting me and helping me get cards to make more videos, especially on the Commander videos and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and get started. I'll show you what it is that he wanted, and we'll go from there. So he originally wanted three Commander decks, and then there was another thing added later. So... We'll start off with the first one. He wanted my Feather of the Redeemed Commander deck. It's a beginner deck, but it actually hits pretty hard. It's a 100-card complete deck, like all of my decks. And he wanted that one, so I decided, okay, well, I mean, that's fair enough. We'll go ahead and add that. Next one he wanted to add was one of my newer decks that I had created. One of my more, you know, this one's one of my favorite ones I created on the budget series, which is my Finn the Fang Bearer. Uh, all the decks have a list that are, you know, out there on the internet. On my channel, every single one of them has a video, so he knows exactly what he's getting. This one is an Infect Death Touch conglomerate of a deck. It kind of goes very hand-in-hand, -hand, especially with Finn. So he wanted that one, right? And then the last Commander deck he wanted, it's unfortunate that this deck, I had to take off the Marketplace, but he wanted it. Uh, the reason why I came off the Marketplace was because uh, I do my decks for $40, and the deck itself actually blew up to almost double that price. So the deck is my Ulrich, the Krellen Horde. It's my Werewolf Travel deck, and unfortunately Innistrad kind of doubled the price. So I took it off the market just because it wasn't a $40 deck anymore, and I had to figure out a way to make it cheaper. So I didn't get there because he told me this is one of the ones he wanted. So we added that to the trade. So that's three decks that he wanted. And then after that, going over all that, he mentioned to me that he asked me, do you have a... My, my favorite commander deck I play, own, and, and is my own is my Slimefoot deck. And he asked me, do you happen to have like a foil Slimefoot or anything like that? And I don't. I have just a regular old Uncommon from Dominaria. And he's like, well, what if I got you the retro border foil version of Slimefoot? And I said, yeah, but how, what am I going to give you for it? Well, he came up with a solution. He wanted one of my little budget decks that, you know, I sell for 20 bucks, And he wanted that. And this is my Centaur deck. It's a life gain, you know, simple deck. It's just a fun little deck to play. He said he'll trade me the Slimefoot for the whole deck. I was like, okay. So we added that to the trade. All right. Then we started talking more because, you know, time goes by and he, you know, he has something that he wants to do with some Minotaurs, but he doesn't have a whole lot. He sent me a list of what he has and it wasn't a lot. 
I don't have a lot either, but what I had was ones he didn't. So I decided, okay, for free and just because, you know, I like the guy, I'm just going to throw in one of each that I had that I could find. So I threw that in there as well. So that's added to the trade. And then we have a couple of other things. He had a list of cards he wanted to send me. And I was like, okay, I have some. I don't have some. You know, I'll see if I can acquire some, you know, however we can do it. So let me go over what I did have of his list. I, I don't have a copy of his list anymore. This has been going on for months, and I have no idea where any of that stuff went. The conversation went long, but, you know, here's a couple of the cards that he wanted. He wanted a Sword of the Body and Mind, and I had a couple, so I said fine. An Azusa, who doesn't want an Azusa? Uh, Garrick Wild Speaker, of course. Uh, Adaptive Automaton, I'm sure, is for one of these decks, and if not one of these decks, it's one of the many that he probably has. A Mind Bend, I don't know what that's going to go in. Uh, it was just on his list. And then one of my personal favorites is Relentless Rats. He actually might be wanting to make a rat deck, and I figure, well, I mean, I have one. I love it. So, I mean, these are extras. I don't need them, so I'll throw them into the trade as well. And the monetary value comes close as far as everything from what he's sending me. Now, I don't remember everything he's sending me, but I remember the list was actually stuff I really, really needed. But there's one more surprise. So I have in this box that I'm going to make a little package in here. It's one card. And I have a little note on the, on the outside of the package. It's sealed inside a hard sleeve, turned around onto a sleeve that has a backing, so he can't tell what the card will be even after he opens the package. And my note says, inside this envelope is something that we talked about, and we have talked about this card. Uh, I said, normally I don't trade reserve list cards for non-reserve list cards, which I never do. And inside this package is a reserve list card. And it said, I made an exceptionist case because over the months, you've become not only my biggest fan of the sh channel, but a friend. Enjoy it, and I hope it helps you win many games. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to package this all up, and I'm going to get it to him. And then I'm going to have him record him opening. You already know what's in here. I'm going to have him record opening this package, this little one right here. And then I'm going to have, I want to see his reaction. Likewise, he actually did the same for me. He has a package that's being sent to me where there's a package in there just like this that's hidden. And he wants me to open it without knowing what it is on the video to see my reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this package up, sent out to him. And then I'm going to take the package he sent me and I'm going to open that up and see what's inside. And then what we're, you know, we're going to go ahead and see what the little surprise inside was for me. So first, let me go ahead and get this all packed up. Wow, through the power of 50s and 60s TV magic, it magically appeared to be all boxed up and ready to go. So the only thing we have to do now is get it to him. So whenever you're ready, Joe, I'm going to go ahead and just magically have it appear in your hands. One, two, three, and... That was cool. Did you get it, Joe? Yep, got it. Okay, perfect. So while Joe is sitting there opening up his box and going through the stuff I showed you I sent him, I'm going to have him come back to us when he has gotten to the surprise part of it. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But first, let me go ahead and show you the package I received. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. He wants to hear my reactions. Hopefully I gave him the ones he wants. And we'll go from there. So let's see what it was. I don't remember almost... 50%, maybe 60% of what's supposed to be in here. The other thing that's concerning me is that this box is rather heavy for what was supposed to be in this box. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Let's see. And another box inside. All right. This box is way, way, way too heavy for what we're supposed to do. I guess that means I owe you some stuff there, Joe. All right. So there's a thing I'm supposed to read first in here. Let me go ahead and open that up and see. All right, in this box, there is a lot of goodies. I know you will enjoy them. When you open the deck box that is enclosed, open the cards in the green sleeve card, green and green sleeve and blue sleeves last. There are some special goodies in those sleeves. As for everything else, open in whatever order you would want to. I have very much enjoyed your videos and look forward to many more. The special goodies are for what you do and for being very informative in your knowledge of the game that we both love so much. From your friend and brother in magic, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I do enjoy doing the videos, and I really am glad that you enjoy them. So you said the blue and green. I'm going to open them last. Wow, these are packed in here. Why is there so much stuff in here, Joe? <laughs> I can't even get it open. I can't even get them out. <laughs> you packed this in really tight. All right, 
Hopefully I can get this out. How did you even get these in the box, Joe? Oh, boy. All right. So let's put some stuff aside. There's more stuff in here than was supposed to be here, Joe. All right. So let me go ahead and uh, pause for a second while I go ahead and set this up. And we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got it all sorted out the way I believe he wants me to go ahead and open these in order. And I'm going to go ahead and start. So we're going to go from left to right like we were reading. And I'm going to move these to the side so I can open everything up and show you what he sent me. This is a lot, Joe. I really appreciate it. And I know that I needed a lot of stuff to make decks. And I know that that's the reason you sent it was because you wanted me to make more videos. Man, this is a lot. So for those of you who don't know, I, I make a lot of the... Uh, Bunch of decks, so there's a bunch of long wilds. I needed them because I add them to my commander decks because they're good. Uh, they make the they help make the forty dollar decks work very well. So that's a nice bonus there. And I have a huge list of commons and uncommons that I needed to add to stuff so that I could make the decks because I was running out. We got some foil islands. He knows that I'm personally you know a fan of foil islands, so that's nice. And some more evolving wilds. So that's a really good stuff, Joe. I appreciate that. Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna be here for a while opening. Uh, I have so, I have a big I'm a big fan of bears, so obviously this may be a bear pack. Mother bear. Now these are a bunch of the un, um, commons and uncommons that I have on the list. Uh, some slivers. Obviously, I'm trying to make a sliver deck. Uh, I have a bunch of fungus decks, so that's nice stuff there too. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Holy bejesus! It's gonna take me a while. This video was supposed to only be about 10 minutes. It's gonna go well above 10 minutes. What else we got here? We got some Corrupts, some Hidden Torox, Pontiff of Blights. I wanted the Extort for some of the budget decks that I make. Uh, Champion Dusk is always nice for that, too. So this has got some of the uh, the Lord stuff and some of the Tormod stuff that I was looking at making. Got a lot more Foil Islands, some more Evolving Wilds, and some Uncommon Lands, or some Common Lands that I needed for color fixing for the budget decks. Looks like some more Evolving Wilds, and I needed a lot. Uh, trust me, it sounds stupid, but when you make Landfall decks on a budget, Evolving Wilds are really nice, cheap ways to do it. So there's four more. Wow. I haven't even gotten to the good stuff, and I'm excited for what I got here. <laughs> some Bruins, some Ramming Up Bruins, some Foil Quandrix Pledge Mages, which I actually needed to make for a specific deck. Chatterstorm Cat Tokens, because I make a lot of cat decks. Squirrels. Love squirrels. The Wanderers, one of my favorite command, uh, planeswalkers. Imperian Ain uh, Eagles and some Graceful Adepts. Wow, you even had Graceful Adepts, huh? You had a lot more stuff than I was thinking you had. Jeez, ew. Alright, so some of the more expensive stuff. And I've got some other cheaper stuff here. You know what? I got one more pack here. I'll open beforehand. Some Counter Magic because, you know, why not? Some Timmies. Feed from the, freed from the real. I didn't even own one. I actually have a deck I might put that in. Right now, dominates tapping lands. Jeez, ew. how long have you been collecting for? Whelming Wave is a great budgetary card to put in some decks that need some removal that you know is too expensive. Jeez, I haven't even gotten into the expensive stuff yet. All right, so some of the stuff from the trade that I'm I needed that you know was actually paid for because that all stuff wasn't paid for so. Here's Ghoul Color Gisa. I'm hoping it's only one card per. So let me just check that real quick. Yeah, it's one. Thank God. Uh, one card per. So Ghoul Color Gisa. I never opened one. I never got one. I need it for my uh, zombie my zombie deck. My uh, Scarab God deck. So that's awesome. Academy Ruins was another one. I need that for a myriad of decks. I needed a bunch of copies of it. So that's great. Same thing with the Hall of Heliod's Generosity was in the trade. Uh, I need that for... Two decks I believe I have that are enchantment based, so that's great. Uh, this one was a personal. I traded a. Sp I told you guys I, I traded a deck fully for this. That was the deal that we made. This is going to be be immediately changing out my uh, my slime foot regular old copy for this. Now that's a beauty if I've ever seen one. I love the shooting star on the foils. For the, when they did that with Time Spiral Remastered, I was quite impressed. Open the graves. That's for one of my other zombie decks. And then the big get, this is, I have four decks that need this, and it's doubling season. I have so many decks that need a doubling season. I have all the other ones, like Primal Vigors and stuff like that, but I don't have, I think I had one or two doubling seasons, and I have a lot of tokens. I have ones that create one one tokens, I have ones like Slimefoot that wants to create, you know, obviously fungus tokens, uh, and sapling tokens, so I needed it for that. So that's great. Uh, there's also a keep 
common Hodor box, which is absolutely wonderful because it's, you know, one of my favorite series was Game of Thrones. So that's a nice little surprise I wasn't expecting. I have no idea what's in here. So we're just going to put some of this pile to the side because that's a big pile and go through. All right, so these are cards that look like they were on my list of uh, once. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, I, some of them look like they're budget ones. Some of them look like they're not budget ones. So I like making vampire decks. I have one. I need some of that. Embodiment of Agonies is actually something for a budget deck that I usually make. Mind Spring, always good. Endless Atlas is one of my favorite cards that they've made. I'm a big fan of um, monocolor decks. So that's a great addition, for, especially for non-drawing card. Non-colors that don't draw cards. Uh, Sanctum Seeker is a great card. <laughs> From under the full board's great for zombie stuff. Ethereal Absolution, absolutely wonderful for a lot of the black, white, or Orzhov colors that I like to do. Genesis is great. I have a lot of Graveyard Recursion decks I make. <laughs> Manamorphose, we all know that's just a good card to have. Uncaged the Menagerie, I like to make, obviously, decks that have green in them. I actually had this in one of my personal decks, and I like to use them in budget decks as well. Terranika, a Crone Veteran, always nice too. Definitely a great addition. Let's see, uh, whenever... It attacks and tap target creature you control, and until in the turn that creature gains power and toughness 4-4, four, four, and indestructible. So I have a deck for this already. Bogarden Hellkite, good for dragons. Treasury Thrall, uh, I love Extort, one of my favorite abilities in the game. Uh, Conspicuous Snoop, I mean, Goblin Token, or Goblin Tribal is always great, and I have a couple of things I can do with that. Phyto Titan, I, oh, wow, and it's foil too. <laughs> the funny thing is, is I was hoping to get a couple of, uh, I've been trying to trade for a couple of regular Phyto Titans without being foil. I have a foil one, but not non-foil ones. This is absolutely a, a gangbusters in things like, uh, what the hell is his name? The black green one that I made, it was a budget deck that you sacrifice a creature and it deals damage equal to its power to all opponents, and then it comes back. Really good Agent of Fates, Death Touch. I like making Death Touch decks. Dungeon Geist, good for control decks and spirit decks. Atrasta, or Arasta, sorry. Uh, I like making spider decks. If you've seen, I've made four different versions of my spider decks. People like them too. One of my favorite cards in general, Thought Spy Network. I'm a big fan of artifacts, so that's a great addition. Languish, gotta have removal. Scab Clan Berserker, Knight of the White Orchid, Rampaging Balos for that landfall stuff. Planar Outburst, always need... Board sweeps, Sylvan Advocate, one of my favorite elves that was made from uh, the Origins set, Magic Origins. Graveyard Marshal, obviously Soul Rings because I ran out. Uh, Masty Myers, one of my favorite elves for card draw and for recursion. Acclaimed Contender, Dust to Dawn, great for another board wipe. Victory's Herald, Squee, Squee is fun just to say his name. Night Pack, Night Pack Ambusher, nice little Wolf and Werewolf Tribal. Daxos of Melody, Meletus, Meletus, whatever. Exaba, a Sun Titan, always like that. More Sylvan Advocates. Pentavis, oh man. Pentavis actually has the ability to be infinite if you do it right. I have a deck that has it too. Krenko, the, the newer Krenko. Orn Reef Hydra, always good for landfall abilities. Pestilent Spirit, I actually want to try, I haven't made it yet, but I want to try a deck that literally is just instants and sorcerers that deal damage, so obviously it's going to be Rakdos Colors, and I want this to be one of the main focuses with it. Dawn Elemental, sounds kind of weird, it's an older card, prevent all damage that would be dealt to him. I have some flying decks that I actually like this in, and I actually have one other deck. So, he's good in a Pestilence style deck, and I like doing those. Uh, I believe Pauper has a Pestilence style deck, I think you know, obviously this isn't a pauper card because it's rare, but it's actually not bad for when I do my budget decks for that. Dreadhard Butcher, Goblin Dark Dwellers, I've used that in a lot of my budget goblin decks. Jade Light Rangers, just good overall, it's a green merfolk. The Sovereign for more merfolk fun. Inferno Titan is actually a pretty good uh, mythic for a lot of budgetary decks where you're trying to do burn because he does burn as well. Another Man of Morphos. Uh, this is a, a recent card that I started adding to some of my budget decks, Reflections of Lit. Jara, it helps with, you know, when you choose a creature type, you can actually copy it. It helps with flooding the board. Pyre of Heroes is another one that's a newer one that I started using. Uh, Murderous Rider is good. I have it in my my personal Scarab God deck, so I like that. It's got Lifelink as well. Revival and Revenge, good for Graveyard Recursion or doubling your life total, which is always good, especially if you do something with uh, the Black Enchantment that when you gain life, at the, uh, when opponents gain life, they lose that life instead, so you can gain on them a lot. Charks I use in my mill decks. Goblin Marshal. Love Goblin Marshal. Uh, the ability to create tokens. This, I don't believe I have one of my own. I think that this is probably going, if I don't have it, it's going into my own personal Perforos deck. Deep Root Champion. Uh, 
Another Murfolk that's green, another Metamorphos. Uh, Nighthawk Scavenger. Uh, I do a lot of Death Touch decks. This is a great one to put into that. He actually gets pretty big. So that's part of the pile. Ah, there's a lot here, Joe. I don't even know. All right, Diagraph Colossus. A Multani, love that in Landfall decks. Earthquakes, obviously good for removal. Pride Sovereign, love it in Cat decks. Adventurous Gargoyle, another addition to... Uh, I believe I have this in my... What the hell is the name of the deck? My blue, my non Aloro blue, black, white deck. Ooh, and a foil one too, Joe. Hour of Devastation, always good. And Archdrode, Lords, Lords, Lords. I'm a big fan of Tribal lately. Hall of Triumph, the creatures you control the chosen color get plus one plus one. It's always good. Return of the Ranks, some slivers, a lot of slivers, a lot of slivers. Adorned Pouncer, more for cat decks. Uh, Burning Anger. Oh! I actually needed this. I, I I believe it's my the pirate deck that I made the uh, breaches and whatever deck. Uh, I wanted enchantments that make the creatures deal damage because one of them says whenever a pirate deals damage, you get to take the talk out of their library. So I I liked that as well. Toxin Sliver, Trepanation Blade. I love Trepanation Blade. Uh, Blossoming Marsh. That was wow, 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 wow. Another Sliver, Dreadhorde Butcher, Imperious Perfect, and a Spore Burst. Joe, I owe you some stuff. I did not send enough. <laughs> Holy, there's still more cards here. Two-headed sliver, burning sliver, more slivers. Wow, look at all these slivers. I guess I am making that sliver deck now. Now that I have uh, more fun, I like land destruction, Hapatra. Oh, I actually ran out of Hapatras. I, I wanted to make a Hapatra deck, so that's great. You sent me a mirror matrix. I think this is the one I was missing. I was just literally, Joe, you don't understand. I was just literally talking to somebody about my mirror deck uh not working correctly, and I needed some some of the cards that I was missing. This is one of them. Wow, mirror match, good one to have in there. That deck as well. Scrap trawler, I love free bird recursion for that. Kumina, Kumina's awakening, goblin war chief, hour of eternity. What in the world, Joe? How many cards do you have? Some seven dwarfs. I always like seven dwarfs. I was actually three short, so of the seven, hero of the precinct one, dread presence. And you guys got to remember, I know that a lot of this looks like some bulk budget stuff, but you don't understand. I can actually, the way that my mind works is I can take some of this stuff. Another Hapatra, I can make another one. A Staff of Domination. You know, unfortunately, I did go out and buy four because I hadn't found any, but they're all gone already, so love it. Comet Storm. And again, they look like budget things, but man, you can do a lot of stuff with some bulk that you don't realize. I can make a pretty nasty deck out of, a, you know, a $20 deck. Hive Stirrings, Soul Rings, Finn. I, <laughs> didn't I just send you the Finn deck? Ah... Uh, Marcus Command, Slither Wisp. Wow, look, that is cool looking. Foil Slither Wisp, Harmonious Archon. Archon. I have an idea with that. Another Hypatra, Kangi. Got a deck for that. Helen, Thelen of Havenwood. You know my love for uh, all things fungus and sapperling. Gargos, Cub Warden. More cats. I love that. I actually needed Guy's Anthems. I only had one and I wanted to use them for stuff. Increasing Confusion. I just put that in a deck. Beast Caller Savant. Yeah, I know. It looks... I mean, it's all just basic stuff, but man, you can do so much with all this. I have an idea with Triska Decaphobia. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I'm going to hope. I didn't open a lot of my uh, Adventures of D&D, &D, so, or Forgotten Realms, so that's a nice addition. Bruner, that's nice. Gutter Bones, love Gutter Bones. It's one of my favorite skeletons that they made. I wish that there was a uh, technically a commander for skeletons. Geralt's Messenger. I don't even think I have that in my, uh, my zombie deck, because I don't think I have one. Squirrel tokens, love it. Genesis Hydra, there's more. I'm telling you, man, there's so much stuff here. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have to speed this video up. I'm already at 16 minutes, and I haven't even gotten through half of it. Oh, I'm going to have to edit that out. Anti-cognition, replicated ring tokens. Look at all this stuff. Cat tokens, love cat tokens. I'm going to give that to my girlfriend. Demon Bolt, oh, Joe. I know it sounds stupid to be so excited about a specific card, but man, I only had one bear foil token. That is a beautiful... Everybody should know by now, I love bears. Disdainful Stroke, Skeleton Tokens, and Mirror Tokens, all foil. Wow. I don't even know what to say, Joe. I have no idea what to sell you. Alright, these are obviously some cards that are special and that I should open separately from everything else. So let's see what this is. Really? It was one of the two that I'd never had opened before. Oh, wow. Okay. I owe you some stuff. Just tell me what you need, and I'll try to find it. Seriously, Joe? Really? All right. Extended art, or borderless. 
endurance and bright climb pathway which is the green or the white black one which i don't ha think i have a lot of and an endurance which i have a deck i have to put it in i will show you guys all that when the time comes what the hell joe all right that was the first part now it's the stuff that he said to do last i don't know how i'm gonna open them to where they're uh i don't know i'll just start opening them. this one you gave me from our goal deck, which sadly is now banned so let's see what it was which is the only card i needed i literally said i tried pulling it out of three boxes and i didn't pull and now he's banned damn it all right we're gonna move the personal collection stuff out of the way i'm gonna go into uh, the slime foot deck which i have some stuff a lot of stuff i actually need still so let's see what you gave me for the slime foot deck a foil life and limb which goes infinite which is really nice and a foil i don't have a foil selenite hermit in that deck so that's even better wow you're too good joe you're too good for me <laughs> all right wow the, the joys of painting with slivers small little inside thing let's open that one and take a look there's a lot of slippers in here because this thing is jam-packed so we got a fungus sliver i don't think i own one of those mana weft sliver which i'm going to need shifting sliver which i'm also going to need and a foil gem hide i guess i am making that sliver deck mortifon is going to be the commander probably and if not i don't have a sliver clean like a sliver queen like some people unfortunately so I got rid of mine so long ago, it was not even funny. All right, more slime foot stuff. Let me see what we got here. Trying to open them as carefully as possible. They are jam-packed. All right, what do we got in here? A foil death spore sliver. I don't even have a sliver. I don't even think I have one. Dale Germinator and a Sporoloth Ancient from the Time Spiral remastered. Jesus. More slime foot fun and this... And I'll explain the one that's underneath of this one in a minute because that's the reason that we started talking in general about decks and deck building and life in general. Some more slime foot stuff. Motor, mold Graph Scavenger, Thalage Shell Dweller, and a Spore Sower Thalage. Some of my favorites here. Spore Sower is one of my favorite uh, fungus or sapling or Thalid or whatever you want to call them in the world. All right, I have to explain this one. Degenerate deck build. So one of the things he asked me about, he wants to make some of the most degenerate decks in the, ever made. And we talk about it. And I don't build too degenerately but i do have some that are degenerate so let's see what his idea of degenerate was that's freaking degenerate joe that's a real degenerate huh i may have to actually make that deck so that i can tell you what it is and we can go over that one that's really in my eyes that's pretty degenerate what else we got here you got for whatever let's see what forever is what whatever is no that's not for whatever I'm actually missing one of these for Alayla, actually. So that's not for whatever, that's for Alayla. Personal collection. Bro, what the hell? Ah, well, you know, that's not for whatever. That's for all my blue decks that I make because I make too many. People hate it, but whatever. All right, we got more stuff. This thing is just never ending. All right, this is part of the trade. I, I need Guardian Projects. It's one of my favorite cards for Commander. So, you're kidding me, Joe. It's the last Liliana I needed. Are you serious? I told you not to send me something like that. Oh, man. I owe you way more than I thought. All right, so I've been complaining that this is the only Liliana I don't have for my uh, Scarab, God Scarab God deck. Uh, I want it for the Swamp Retrieval. Uh, I also want it for making my swamps add more so that I can be a little bit more degenerate with it. Jesus. I owe you way more than I sent you. So just give me a list again and I'll send you some more stuff because this is way above and beyond. Sap tokens. These are pretty cool ones. I don't think I have any of these. Love sapling tokens. Love sapperlings. All right, this is part of my want list as well. Monetary, monastery mentor. Never opened one. Out of all the dragons or fate or forge, sorry, uh packs that i've opened in my time i've never owned this and prowess is, prowess is one of my new favorite abilities in magic i have a couple of ideas with that i had an idea for that at first i have some decks that can use it but i think i'm going to change directions on that and put that in its own deck because i found something i liked some more sapling tokens uh that was originally going to go into my kakar deck but i think i have some uh some other ideas for that kiki jiki i'm going to be putting this into perforos so that I can make more tokens. 
Uh, equilibrium, I'm not going to take it out of the thing. Uh, equilibrium, I'm building Tulane. That's going to go in that. Uh, I'm building... Uh, so back in the day, before Commander was the multiplayer format, uh, it was 60 card, and I had something called Christmas Evil, which was red and green, which was give too much mana till, till it burns. Uh, they took mana burn out shortly after, you know... I stopped playing the deck, so I'm rebuilding it again with a, uh, a different commander. We all know who that is, and Shizuko is going into that deck, so that I didn't have one. That's great. Seriously, Conqueror's Flail. I have 40 decks that could use this. What the hell? Huh. It's a Merch Saber Tooth. Uh, my Animar deck, I'm not even looking at updating that yet because I just don't have enough of the stuff that I need for it. It's a Merch Saber Tooth was the first option that was going to be put in there, so I can start looking at that now. Realm Walkers, I need more of these than you can imagine. I love the fact that it's a changeling. So it can help any tribe, and it's foil, and it's extended art. No, maybe not. It's borderless. That's what... No, it's actually extended art, because there's a border. Grim Tutor. Always need tutors. Jesus. Helm of the Host. I need, again, more than I can imagine. Mirage Mirror. Same thing. I got a lot of artifact decks. Kindred Charge. I'm trying to build Brutaclad, and I'm short on some cards. That Mirror Matrix was one of them. This is another special seating, because I did not get a lot of the... Uh, what they call bond lands in my Commander Legends box. So I have decks that need them. War Room, it's foil Joe, really. Uh, I didn't open a single one of these in my Commander Legends box, and I suggest it for every deck that I, I that doesn't have blue in it. It's free draw for the most part. I mean, it's a couple life. And then the last card. The most important card to me out of this whole thing. Why is it foil Joe? Whoa. I didn't get a Lich Lord of Unks out of anything I've opened in all of my time playing Magic. I needed it for, not for some, for Scarab God. I'm actually in the middle of updating Scarab God for the video now. And I was sitting there trying to make deals for this card for with anybody that had it. So I don't have to anymore. So from the bottom of my heart, Joe, thank you, but I owe you. So that's everything in my box. I feel embarrassed that I'm about to show you what I sent him. I mean, sure, one of them is a reserve list card. But uh, that's not anywhere near what you sent me. So I owe you big time. So get me a list when you have a chance and I'll see what I can come up with if I can find anything that you need. Uh, so why don't we just throw it over to you and, and show everybody what it is that I sent you that now looks like nothing comparatively. Well, thanks. I read this and I appreciate it very much. Holy shnikes. That's more than what I expected. Can we all just take a second to admire Joe's playmat? Rewind the video for a second. Just take a look at his playmat. That's a pretty cool playmat that you play magic on. So just take a second there. Uh, other than that, I, I want to thank you for watching. This was my gift to everybody here on Christmas Day. It was a gift to me, obviously, with all the, the goodies and the haul that I got here. I want to thank you all for watching, but I especially want to thank Joe for helping make this possible. This was way more than I could have ever expected. It was way more than I was expecting, and I, I think that I owe you a little something, as I mentioned earlier. So we're going to talk about that over the next couple weeks and see what I can do to make up for the fact that I really just dropped the ball as far as what I sent you. Uh, other than that, I'm going to ask you to do me the favor that I always do, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then of course share this out to anybody you think may enjoy it. And then I'm going to end the video in a manner that I've never done before. I'm actually going to have somebody else do it. So Joe, take it away. Happy holidays, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>